Hey guys, so Marvel, which I have no interest anymore. It seems like I don't know, like every year there's like 15 products of you know whether it be movies or you know, TV shows that come out. I'm just I think everyone's just marveled out at this point because it's nothing creative anymore. You know, I remember when a lot of the Marvel movies came out, you know, years after each other. Uh, and it made it so much more interesting and essentially magical to see these, see live actions, like live action versions of some of our favorite superheroes, you know, seeing them in a movie. Um, and done well, because the movies are pretty good. Um, also, I had to stop because I could see the thing right there. It's from the window. <laughs> um... But yeah, there was always such a this span of time between, you know, one Marvel movie to another. Now it's just like, it seems like multiple a year are coming out. Multiple uh, TV shows are coming out. And it's just, it's not fun anymore. It's not interesting. People just don't seem to care about it uh, as much. I, I've seen a lot of people say, yeah, they, they're done with Marvel. They're done with Marvel. They're done with DC. They're done with you know, a lot of this stuff because it's just become so ridiculous. But we're right, uh, we hear abounding into comments. Marvel's secret invasion director admits he does not care about the series poor fan reception. It it it, it is our job. <clears throat> is it our job to fulfill their expectations or to tell the story that we're telling? Well, you can tell whatever story you like, but if it sucks, no one's gonna watch it. You're not going to get those views. And then you've just lost hundreds of millions of dollars because I'm sure that's what's going into these uh, these TV shows nowadays. So, I mean, you're free to write a crappy show. You know, if it was something that didn't have source material, then I would say, oh, you know, it's a little, it's a little different. But no, there's source material. Plenty of it. It's right at their fingertips. All they have to do is look at it. But... They're, you know, uh, is it our job to fulfill expectations or to tell the story that we're telling? Uh, desp despite the resoundingly negative response to the scroll-based series, Marvel's Secret Invasion director Ali Salim has admitted that he doesn't does not feel bad about the show's poor reception, particularly as he believes the devoted even rabid nature of the franchise's fan base does not lend itself to productive discussions around its various entries. Maybe this rabid fan base is tired of mediocre bullcrap coming out. I, I, I'm just throwing things out there. Maybe the rabid fan base are not rabid at all. Maybe they are people who have loved the franchise since they were kids, and they're tired of seeing destroyed by mediocre uh, political bullcrap being forced into their series and movies. Tired of the terrible writing, the terrible character development. The fact that, again, it seems like uh, in just one year you'll have multiple uh, Marvel movies come out when it used to be more of a novelty type thing. Maybe fans are just tired of it. Maybe. Maybe they're just tired of it. So those rabid fans are just normal people who are just tired of the BS. Let's see, as of running her video, Rotten Tomatoes, blah, blah, blah. So we got 55. Actually, hang on. Let me go to Rotten Tomatoes right now. All right, we're here at Rotten Tomatoes. Um, all right, so this is all critics. 52. And then it's actually gone down. Uh, top critics. All critics, 55. 50. Huh. So maybe people are, again... Just tired of the crap. Maybe 
when Disney got a hold of Marvel, you know, people had expectations. You know, Disney for the longest time has been known as, you know, the magical kingdom where they produced high quality, uh, just a high quality product. And it wasn't one after another after another, like Lion King. And then you had to wait a couple years for another movie to come out. And then another movie to come out a couple years. It wasn't just one after another in the same freaking year. Uh, and if they did, they weren't like heavy hitters. So like, like I said, like Lion King. Lion King comes out and you can have another, but it, it's, it's not a heavy hitter like Lion King was. And then you have Aladdin. Same thing. There could have been one or two other ones, but Lion King was, or um, Aladdin. Then you had like Hercules, which I think ultimately didn't do too well. It's at least nowadays it's looked fondly back on, but I mean I love that movie. Um, but the muses were in black. I actually like the muses. I think they were amazing. Um. And if you look at the behind the scenes thing with the, for the muses, you know, recording their songs and everything, how they are actually dancing and singing, it's, it's really cool. But yeah, uh, Disney had standards. They had standards. They had a passion. They had a love for what they did. They had quality product. Pushing the boundaries of what could be done in an animated film. Even live action stuff. Um, but nowadays, it's just so dime a dozen that it's just, it's not magical anymore, you know? And people are finally getting tired of it. Um, at season one, 8%. Uh, ha, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, uh, where's the regards on the tour is Metacritic 78, uh, 78 Metacritic users. The user reviews have left Secret Invasion with a 3.6 across 76 or 78 reviews. Salim revealed, oh, I don't read reviews. With all due respect, he explained, for me, I view all the storytelling work I do as dialogue with an audience. Well, then maybe you should read the views because reviews are dialogue. When the show's finished up and put up on the screen, that's my half of the dialogue. And the audience then starts their half of the response to it. In that, I think that's valuable, but I don't know. I don't know how to answer the question. It's a pretty simple question. I don't feel bad about mixed reviews. If you had you not uh, unanimously uh, unanimously good reviews, every movie would gross ten billion trillion dollars, right? No. No. Like, if you had unanimously good reviews, every movie. No, that. No. Just okay, kid. That's like a childish response right there. We're making trillion bajillion dollars. Projects resonate with different people at different times for different reasons. And Marvel has a very devoted, even rabid fan base. There goes that word again, rabid. They're not rabid. They're not these snarling beasts who are like, Argh. no, they are passionate because Marvel has been around for a very long time. So when we hear something Marvel coming out that has an image to it, a quality standard to it, we expect that quality standard to be upheld. But when you keep producing movie after movie, TV after TV show, a TV show of mediocre bullcrap, people are going to get mad. And then when season two doesn't get picked up, you wonder why. Because you produ produced a 
non-interesting, non-fun, mediocre quality product. And people are going to show you what they think of it but with their wallets. They're not going to be seeing the movies. They're not going to be purchasing uh, Disney Plus or whatever. And in the end, who's going to be losing the money? It's not going to be the, 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 the fan. It's going to be you, who no doubt are spending hundreds of millions of dollars into each of these episodes. Uh, have even rabid fan base who have expectations and when their expectations aren't fulfilled they move in the other direction they get a thumbs down you think well i don't like it the characters are crap the storytelling is crap the special effects are crap but i mean of course people if they don't like it they're going to give it a thumbs down that's so it's a tricky thing oh wait well let's see uh thumbs down the director concluded i don't know is it our jobs to fulfill their expectations or to tell the story we're telling yes especially when you have source material with what you're trying to do why are people so afraid of source material nowadays what what happened why not Take out some old Marvel comics uh, with these particular stories in them and read them. What is so hard about sticking to source material or, you know, characters from source? What's so hard about this? Freaking source material is like they're fucking kryptonite. They're afraid of this stuff. And they try to stay as far away from it as possible. So it's a tricky thing. I would love if everybody loved it, but I also don't have expectation, uh, that expectation myself. So I feel great about the response to it. For the three people still interested, the dangling pot threads left unresolved by the end of Secret Invasion will supposedly be addressed on November 10th when the, Marvel, uh, when the Marvels crashes into theaters, which no one seems excited for either. <clears throat> wow talk about having no idea what his job is you are absolutely free to create whatever unwatchable garbage that you like your right is to create unwatchable garbage to be protected uh an inalien is an inalienable right but nobody has to consume it i may not agree what I may not agree with what you say, but I would fight to the death for Disney's right to flush 200 million down the toilet. <laughs> Seriously, how do they expect to make money? You shouldn't be allowed to direct any film. You're, pl uh, you're playing to the fan base here, not your inner circle of snooty friends who look down on comics and those who enjoy them. Either you fulfill that what the audience wants, or eventually you don't have a job. <laughs> Just finished the show after seeing the memes. Over two million for uh, two, over two hundred million for that. Where did the money go? What a great example of precisely what is wrong with all mainstream creators these days. They're losing money and about to be sold to pieces and still haven't realized anything. The level of narcissism is truly fascinating. Friendly reminder that these writers think they deserve more money while feeling no obligation to create monetary return for the company. Yeah, exactly. They expect all this money to come in, but they they keep producing a, a, a quality pro, a product that isn't up to standard. Not what we come to expect from Disney, from Marvel. I just, I don't, un if the story that they are uh, telling is not pr producing revenue, then how do they expect to get paid? <laughs> That's a show for money. Due to personal reasons, you'll be passing away. Hey, Marvel, this could be you. Unfortunately, you hate your fans and then wonder why you don't get praise. 
Ishikawa cries. Oh, okay. Wow. The source material is right there in so many forms. Comic books and actual encyclopedias detailing every single character from the universe that can easily be can be adapted easily. So fans of the source material do expect something good. This is why they are failing and they deserve it. Yeah. It's your only job, actually. Telling a compelling story. Telling a co compelling and coherent story while respecting the world that you have uh, that has been handed to you. Yeah, exactly. It's like I can't stand when people take a franchise, make crap about me, like, oh, yeah, I've never actually seen it. Because it comes through. It'll, it shows that you've never seen it before. It shows you don't know anything about the world. One reason why, like, the Mario movie did so well is because there was obviously a lot of people on board who had a passion for not only Nintendo, but for Mario. That's why the movie was so good, and that's why it made, you guessed it, a lot of money. It made, what, a billion dollars or more? Like, a little over a billion dollars? Because it was a good quality product, it knew its fan base, it knew what it was doing, and it was fun. It wasn't preachy, it wasn't uh, any kind of bull crap, it stuck to source material. Tons of Easter eggs throughout every scene. It was fun, and people enjoyed it. That's why it made so much money. Your product also has the capability of making a billion dollars, but you're not putting the effort to do it. It's not that fucking hard. A 35-year-old should not have to tell you fucking idiots how to make the money. Create a quality product, and people will pay to see it, and people will continue watching, and you'll make your money. Not that hard. Not that hard. Especially when you have so much freaking source material to work with. Filling expectations. People actually want your project. Advertisers are happy. Companies get revenue. Tell your story. Gamble everything, then complain and blame everyone for poor reception. Companies need to take a closer look at who they trust with their IPs. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Wait, lower our, our expectations? I mean, just saying Agents, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and more with less. Yeah, apparently Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was a really good show. <laughs> Talk about being out of touch with reality. <laughs> don't worry, Mr. or Ms. Mrs. Director. The fans don't care about you either. Yeah, I mean... Your job status will let you know soon. Yeah, so... Another out-of-touch Hollywood elitist who thinks that... You know, what the fans say don't matter. And that there's rabid fans when they're just normal people who are just tired... Of seeing the stuff that they've grown up with butchered. Uh... You have people who are making these stories, not looking at the source material at all to draw inspiration. You know, the source material is there. It's there. All you had to do is take the time to look at it. And again, it's like I said with the Mario movie, it proves you can make a lot of money when you do it right. The marketing was amazing. The people working on it obviously had a passion for Mario. The... the it was a fun, bright, vibrant movie that kept to the characters. And it was a fun experience for them. That's all you have to do. And in Mario's case, though, the story doesn't have to be that deep. It's, it's, it's freaking Mario. Uh, but for the story of, you know, Marvel, you have all these amazing characters that have never been explored yet. Why not bring some of these other characters in? You know, some of these characters that can wipe out time and space itself, you know, across the multiverse. Not just like Thanos level threat, but, you know, because, you know, Marvel DC have like tier lists of, of these heroes and villains who can basically sneeze everything out of existence. Not just in our universe, 
but um, the multiverse as a whole. Time, space, other dimensions, everything, poof, gone. Why not start telling those stories? Like, I think one thing people are tired of is all these having to be connected. It's like, oh, well, this TV show uh, kind of also ties into the other show. And that show will tie into the movie that's coming out. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying. Um, but yeah, people have to start showing thing, you know, these companies with their wallets. You know, we when it came to Disney and Marvel, we had this idea of a standard of, of, of quality. Now that just tossed out for mediocre bullcrap that gets produced several times a year. And now people are just getting tired of it. And, you know, the, the community has just become more vocal because, again, before it was quality. Now, when you have several things a year with Marvel's name attached to it coming out, it's like, uh, really? Another, another one. It's just people are not really looking forward to this stuff. So... But anyway, more out of touch freaking directors and people in Hollywood because they think they know everything. Never. Yeah. True. Yeah. Really. What? What do you think? Huh? What do you think, Sam? Yeah. What else? Hang on. Oh, I got a gunky eye. Oh, gunky eye. Yeah. So, we used to have quality. We used to have standards. Now there's nothing anymore. They just think, oh, we'll just produce more and make more money. That's not how it works. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. You guys know the drill. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.